So now we'll be looking at when the first assumption from Hardy-Weinberg is violated. So we'll be thinking about when, in fact, there is selection between different alleles. And the first thing to think about is what the fitness is that we're thinking about. There are two types of fitness. There's absolute fitness, which is what we were kind of thinking about earlier in the course. This is thinking about the total number of copies an entity makes of itself, like an individual having offspring or a gene reproducing itself. We can also think about relative fitness. So relative fitness is how does an entity do in terms of reproduction compared to the other entities in the same population. So while absolute fitness is important for ecology, we'll actually be looking at relative fitness in this part of the course. This is the one we're going to be using. This is what's going to tell us how frequencies change within a population. Um, typically in population genetics, we don't care about the size of the population and how that may be changing. If we are interested in how the total size of a population changes, then absolute fitness becomes important. If all we're doing is looking at frequencies within a population, relative fitness is all we need to worry about. So that's what we'll be looking at in this part of the course. So let's think about um, some genotypes and think about their fitnesses. Of our three genotypes that we're considering in this part of the course. And we're going to represent their fitnesses with W11, W12, W22. Um, w represents fitness because uh, F is used for lots of other things. W from Sewell Wright is the symbol we use for fitness. So whenever you see W, it represents fitness. And if we're going to think about relative fitness, we want to think about what is the average or mean fitness in a population. So the mean fitness of individuals in a population is going to be given by the weighted average of each of these fitnesses. So kind of it's going to be based on these three fitnesses and how frequent they are in the population. So if we calculate a weighted average of these three fitnesses, it will come from the frequencies of individuals with each of those fitnesses multiplied by the fitnesses that those individuals have. So that's the frequency of these individuals multiplied by their fitness, frequency of these individuals multiplied by their fitness, frequency of these individuals multiplied by their fitness. So the mean fitness will be given by this equation. And this is also an equation that we want to keep in mind for using later. So now selection in a population does not act on alleles directly. It acts on genotypes. And we're going to model it as acting on the genotype frequencies themselves directly. So we're going to have a frequency of the capital A, A homozygote. And that frequency is going to be changed by selection to become a new frequency based on the fitness of that genotype relative to the mean fitness in the population. And then we'll multiply that by the original frequency. So the new frequency of capital A, A homozygotes after selection will be given by this equation here. The new frequency of the heterozygotes will be given by this. And the new frequency of the lower A homozygotes will be given by this. So this is how we're going to be modeling selection changing genotype frequencies. So now if we want to model the evolutionary process, we're interested in how does P change from one generation to the next because of these changes in the genotype frequencies. So the new frequency of P is the frequency of the capital A allele after this selection. What's the frequency of this capital A allele? Well, it's the frequency of the homozygotes plus one half the frequency of the heterozygotes, right? Because only one half of their genes are the capital A allele. If we simplify this a little bit, we have W bar in the denominator of both of these equations. And then we have P squared, W11 here, plus this half and that 2 will cancel. So that would leave us with W12 times PQ. So what's the new frequency of the capital A allele 
after this selection happens, it's given by this, all divided by this. And so what we're really interested in, though, is we're interested in what is the change in the value of p. The change in that value is the new frequency minus frequency. So now let's take a look at what this will be um, algebraically. So we're interested in this. This new value of p was given by p squared w11 plus pq w12. I'm just rearranging those terms from the previous um, representation, all divided by w bar. And then minus p. So now we want to work with this equation and see if we can't simplify it into something that's a bit more useful. So the first thing that I want to do is be able to combine these terms. So the first thing I'll do is multiply this last term by w bar or w bar. And then I'll be able to combine these terms. And so both of them will have w bar in the numerator. So I can bring that out in front of everything. So that will give me p squared w11 plus pq w12 minus p w bar. And I know what w bar is from earlier. w bar was p squared w11 plus 2pq w12 plus q squared w22. So I'm actually going to substitute all that up into there. So moving this over a little bit to make a little bit more space. p squared 1, 1 plus pq 1, 2 minus p times p squared w11 1, 1, 2 pq w12 plus q squared w22. So it's kind of, it looks like it's getting worse right now, but um, we're going to end up with a better result. So let's keep working on this. Multiplying this through, so that's minus p to the third w11 minus 2p squared q w12 minus p q squared w22. Now looking at these, we're going to notice that there's a w11 there and a w11 there, so we're going to combine these two terms. And then there's, noticing there's a w12 there and a w12 there, we're going to combine those two terms. So combining this and this, that would give us p squared minus p to the third times w11. Looking at this and this, that will give us a pq minus 2p squared q, w12, minus pq squared w22. This I can kind of represent, if I think about it as this thing here is p squared outside of 1 minus p. If I take a p squared out of that. And then 1 minus p, that's q from before. So I can actually make that substitution. So rewriting now. So this is now p squared q w11 plus pq minus 2p squared q w12 minus pq squared w22. Now one thing I can notice next is that in this term I have a pq and I have a pq, so I can pull those out as well. pq out of here, so 1 minus 2p, w12. So I have a kind of long equation here, but 
what I can notice now is this term here has a P and a Q. This term here has a P and a Q. This term here has a P and a Q. So I can pull all those out to the numerator here, and that'll simplify my equation um, quite a bit. And then the other thing I can do is this 1 minus 2p, I'm going to break that up into 1 minus p minus p, and that is actually q. So the next equation that I'll write will do those two simplifications. So pulling the p and the q out over the w bar, what do we have remaining inside? Inside the equation, we have p times w11 plus the q minus p, w12, minus q, w22. So let's um, kind of write that out a little um, longer. p, w11, plus q, w12, minus p, w12, minus q. W2, 2. So now we have this. We can think about how to simplify this. This term here has a P, and so does this term. So we can group these guys together. This term here has a Q, as does that. So we'll group those two together. And so when we do that, outside of w11 and a negative w12 give us this and then q outside of a w12 and a negative w22 and this is about as simple as it's going to get and then we want to stop and think for a second <laughs> what was all this that we were deriving in the first place um, often it's very difficult and we can lose sight of what we were working on in the first place. And the thing to remember is, what was this? This was all delta p, right? What is the change in the value of p from one generation to the next due to selection? And this equation here represents how the value of p changes because of selection. We can see that it's based on the fitness differences between the capital A homozygote and the heterozygote. Fitness difference between the heterozygote and the lowercase a homozygote. But it's also based on the frequency of each of the two alleles. And this equation, um, we're actually going to use it um, in quite a few more examples to derive other equations. Um, this is our starter equation if we're going to be studying selection and its influence on the frequency of alleles in populations.